Robinson against Bombach. Houston is at San Diego. Cincinnati, Tommy Seaver going against Royce at Los Angeles. And Atlanta with Necro going for his 10th win of the year will be at San Francisco against Vida Blue. And if you notice how that San Francisco ball club has been coming around lately, they find themselves only five games out of first place. And if they win tonight, they'll be a 500 ball club. They've been flirting with that 500 mark for a long time. In the American League, the White Sox are entertaining the Boston Red Sox tonight. It'll be Eckersley for Boston against Proley for the White Sox. As we said, New York at Baltimore is the one everybody's going to be watching. Milwaukee at Cleveland also a biggie. Caldwell at, uh, at Cleveland against Grimsley. California at Minnesota. That'll be Tanana against Zahn. Toronto at Kansas City. Jefferson at uh, Jefferson against Leonard there at Kansas City as Kansas City tries to turn it into a genuine route. And it'll be Oakland, one of the surprise teams with their manager, Billy Martin, definitely a contestant for manager of the year honors. He's going to throw Langford against Seattle's Abbott at Seattle, who's now being ma managed by Maury Wills. Langford, by the way, has won 12 and lost nine so far this year. So that's the way she shapes up. And here at St. Louis, there go the Cardinals taking the field now. In a moment, of course, we'll have our national anthem. By the way, with Detroit at bat in the second inning is Texas 2, Detroit 1 at Detroit. Steve Fernandez, catcher Ted Simmons, and pitcher Silvio Martinez. In that Texas-Detroit game, it's Matlock for Texas against Wilcox for the Detroit Tigers. And now Pittsburgh has scored two in the second inning. At the end of two, Pittsburgh 2, Montreal nothing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Crowd here tonight, and a lot of them, of course, will be Cub Rooters because they've come down from Chicagoland. There's Silvio Martinez. They brought him up from Springfield last year, and shortly after he got here, one of his first assignments was to work against the Cubs, and he looked great against them. He's three and two lifetime against them. The weatherman says possible showers tonight. Let's hope that he's only kidding or that whatever showers they had this morning are the ones that are going to be the ones they were talking about. Can't be anything left up there. <laughs> Boy, did it rain. Cardinals on the field. Dane Orge in left. Tony Scott in center. George Hendrick is in right. Ken Reitz at third. Gary Templeton shortstop. Ken Oberkthal at second. Keith Hernandez at first. And the battery, Silvio Martinez and Ted Simmons. Well, the Cubs are pulling out all the stops in effort to get their good luck charms down here. They brought quite a number of people from the front office. Karen Stencil, who is Bob Kennedy's right-hand gal up there. Barney Sterling has made the trip down here. Pete Mead, assistant to uh, Buck and to Jimmy Davidovich on this trip right now. And Wally Culver is here from the Andy Frayne Group. Top coaches guy at first base, number three, Gene Fines. And at third base, uh, also from Andy Frayne's group, Dave and Marisa Perez. And incidentally, with us in spirit, you can be sure. Gus and Florence Sattigan of the Cub family. 
who yesterday celebrated their 51st wedding anniversary. Gus, of course, for all those years, the assistant traveling secretary and assistant home secretary of the Cubs, and still one of the Cubs officials. All right, here's Yvonne de Jesus leading off. Clock shows 741. Now. And it's strike one. We're underway. De Jesus, 268 hitter. Three homers this year, 22 runs batted in. 28 stolen bases in 40 attempts. Ground ball foul. Coaching at first as usual, Gene Kleins. And over at third as usual, Cookie Rojas for the Cubs. Strike to the cup. Fly ball, right field. George Hendrick is over as he tries to sneak by the 0-2 pitch, and Hayes gets good wood on it, but not quite good enough. Lenny Randall up now, one away. Lenny, third baseman, has hit an 11 straight ball games, 275 batting average, one for three. Wherever you are in this great land of ours, welcome to our Chicago Cubs network. Uh, WGN Continental Chicago Cubs Network and of course we know that we're on many cable systems all over this country no, not really. so welcome to an evening of high-class sports entertainment ladies and gentlemen fly ball left field Dane Orge is there the line fly drops right in Two out. That'll bring up Bill Buckner, the right fielder. Buckner is hitting 319. He's up among them. He's hit in six straight. Two for five last night, including a home run. Seven homers, 46 runs batted in. Two out. They're in the Montreal third. Pirates two, Montreal. High outside, ball one. If he gets on, Mr. Kingman will bat. Strike. You take a look at this batting order right now, Milo. And you say, you know, if you if you if you were looking at this batting order, we'll say right now in the first week in April, you'd say this is this is a good batting order. It's really got a shot. You got a couple of real speedsters up front, the Jesus and Randall. Ground ball, and you got Buckner, Kingman, Johnson, Martin, Blackwell. And it's a 4-3 put out on Buckner, and the Cubs are down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Let's move now to the Cardinal half of number one. The bat Cubs on the field with Kingman, Martin, and Buckner in left, center, and right. Randall to Jesus, Tyson Johnson, the infield third to first, the battery, McLaughlin, and Blackwell. Foul ball out of play. Strike one. Gary Templeton, 326 hitter. Two for six last night. Had a bad thumb, and he's been on the disabled list as a result. There's a strike. Last night was his first game. Yeah, and uh, he got, a, as somebody said, his usual two hits, picking up right where he left off. He has 135 hits right now. I doubt if he'll make it to 200. What do you think, Milo? Well, he's got 50 games to do it. His current ratio would dictate that he would. It's a one hopper back to McLaughlin. That's one away. You know, last year he hit 200, got 200 base hits again, and 
Incidentally, uh, came one of those fellows to get 100 base hits, batting left-handed and 100 right-handed. Except that there were some who would tell you that was tainted. Yes, because I know he, what you mean. He yeah. didn't bat, do the switching. Uh, yeah, he bat right-handed against right-handed pitching. Right, in order left, to get the 100 Left-handed against left-handed pitching. Yeah. Let's take it away from him. <laughs> well, yeah, only at 211. Put up an asterisk. <laughs> Ball two, two and oh. Tony Scott, 229 hitter is up. Center fielder, no homer, 16 RBIs. Two for five last night for Tony. Temperature at game time, 78 degrees. Not much wind. There's ground ball right of second. Base hit. So Mr. Scott's on base. And that'll bring up first baseman Keith Hernandez. He's hit safely in 10 out of 11. One for three last night for Keith. 10 homers, 71 runs batted in. 319 batting average, and he leads this ball club in a very important category. Game-winning hits. He has 11 of them. Got a golden glove and a batting title last year. There's a left. Left field line fly, that's out number two. It's co-MVP along with Mr. Stark. Here's Ted Simmons. Hitting 312, two for five for him last night. 15 home runs, 69 runs batted in. He's hit safely in 15 of his last 20 ball games. Big Mac is due to pitch a good one against these guys, Jack. He's really struggled against them this year. Gopher balls have hurt him. He's only worked eight and two-third innings against them and three home runs. Yeah, he's uh, he hasn't had too much luck with them since they traded him. One and two lifetime. Outside. Ball one. Lynn McLaughlin pitching. 1-8, lost 7. He's trying to square up for his lifetime tonight again. He's 181, lost 82. There's the runner breaking for second. He is out. Cub smelled it. Tony Scott out trying to steal. Good fast man, of course, anytime you got a guy like that on base, you have to worry. He has 13 stolen bases. But now he's been shot down seven times. Now Jesus simply putting it on him. No runs. One hit, no errors. Nobody left at the end of one. No score. Same. Three hits and five at bats last night. One of them, a big home run, is 11. Hitting 269, he has 37 RBIs. Strike. Had one year when he hit that many homers with the Mets, even though he was out for several weeks with a broken hand. He really made a recovery last night, Jack. First time up, he chased three curve balls, just looked like he was a ranked beginner. Then the next three times, stung the ball. High fly, short left center. Who wants it? It's the shortstop. And Gary Templeton handles it as Kingman pops up. That's one away. That'll bring up Cliff Johnson. Number seven, first baseman, Cliff Johnson. He's a pinch hitter. He just missed hitting one out of here last night. Funny thing about it, that heavy air, Cubs hit three homers and three others just barely missed going out of here. Having a little coffee with Bertie Tebbets this afternoon at the hotel, and Cliff Johnson walked by, and Bertie said to Cliff, held his two hands about six inches apart, he said, that's all to miss by, Cliff, that's all. Mike Tyson, who hit one, missed one later. One and one to Johnson. As a Cub hitting 281, eight homers, 28 runs batted in. 
Ground ball bouncing high. One hopper there to reach the throw. Two out. Chevy Martin, the batter. They're now in the Montreal fourth. Pittsburgh two, Montreal nothing. Bibby with a shutout for the first three innings. Rogers has been touched Center for two. Fielder, Jerry Martin. Boston got two in the first. The White Sox are now at bat. New York at Baltimore held up by rain. Jerry Martin, 20 home runs. High foul ball. Back near the screen goes Simmons, and Ted has the play and makes it to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. This takes us now to the St. Louis second. Simmons will lead off. No score at St. Louis. 312 hitter. 15 home runs, 69 runs batted, and he was at bat when Scott made the last out trying to steal. No score here in the second. Well, once before when we were watching these two ball clubs play, when the Cardinals were in Chicago, Mr. Simmons got to McLaughlin for a double the first time up and a homer the next. One and one. Ball two, strike one. That's a ball. Ball three, strike one. Milwaukee one, Cleveland nothing. They're in the Cleveland fourth at Cleveland. Phillies and the Mets no score. They're in the Philadelphia second in New York. Ball three, strike one. Foul ball. Three and two. Toronto failed in the first. Kansas City's now at bat. Look at that poor Brett. Getting an anemic 391 down there. You see where they signed his brother? Yeah. yeah. Sent him to AAA. You know, that be, might be kind of a pitcher they could help you in September. Against certain clubs. Pretty well hit, deep to right, it is foul. Simmons gave that one quite a ride, and it moved fast out there. Three and two. That was one of those balls that was hit so hard it just hooked itself out of here. Yeah. You know, getting around to uh, Kenny Brett, got to know him a little when he was with the White Sox and with the Pittsburgh Pirates and the shot he had at the Dodgers. You know, he was some pitcher for a while. And a heck of a hitting pitcher. Some pitcher. He, he was usually good for a home run or two every year. Yeah, I saw him sh take a shot with the Angels out there at Palm Springs. Couldn't quite make it. Well, he finally walked them, so Simmons is on base. And George Hendrick, who got the big hit last night, the game winner, is going to move in. 323 hitter. 21 home runs, 84 runs batted in. Curveball, good pitch. That had a wicked break. No optical illusion there, Jack. No. <laughs> Strike one. Where are those guys who will tell you a ball won't curve? I wanted them to see that pitch. Yeah, have them stand in the batter's box and tell you that. <laughs> one and one. Well, if you want to prove it theory-wise, just throw a ping pong ball. What happens there? Or serve a tennis ball with English on it. All you're doing is doing it with a paddle where the pitcher does it with his fingers and the way he snaps and releases the ball. One and one. Strike. Another curve. Ball one, strike two. Montreal got a run back. They're now in the Pittsburgh fourth. Pirates two, Montreal one. Good duel there, Bibby and Rogers.
That's foul ball. Ball one, strike two. Let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Continental Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. WGN Television, Chicago. Phillies are hoping to get a dividend out of Larry Christensen who just came off the disabled list when they were at our place a couple days ago. He's pitching tonight and leading four to nothing early. One and two. Right. And he knew it. Strikeout number one then for McLaughlin. Left fielder, Dane Orge. And Dane Orge, the left fielder, is up now. Bobby Bonds, normally the left fielder for this ball club. Pinch hit last night, I guess, Milo, didn't he? Yes, failed. Ground ball, let's get two. De Jesus to Tyson and over to Johnson. Simmons forced, Orge doubled up. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Very nice play. And at the end of two, score the ball game. Cubs nothing, Cardinals nothing. There's six Cubs. No score in the ball game. Good crowd, Milo. Yes, uh, they always have a good crowd when the Cubs get here. And a little different. What was it a year ago? Brock was going for 3,000 about this time, wasn't it? You were televising? Right. And he waited till the last game of the series to get it, and they just kept packing him in here, building up to yes, it. I think uh, he gave it uh, to uh, last night's Cub pitcher gave it to him. Yeah, he hit lamp. It. In fact, he hit it off the pitcher literally, didn't he? Yes. We weren't here for that one. That was a game which we were not televising. One of the few. We got a lot of Cub fans here. We got banners all over this place. Here's Blackwell. Foul ball strike one. Timmy is a 271 hitter. Four home runs, 23 runs batted in. Hit in nine straight. And 18 out of 20 and 16 straight in games in which he started. That's quite a streak. Ball one strike one. Strike. Ball one, strike two. That is a foul ball. Ball one, strike two. Martinez can actually throw that ball a little harder than you might think from the looks of him. He's 5'11", weighs 160, and I think they may be giving him the best of it in the program with that line, but he can he can uh, rear back and let her fly once in a while. Once again, fly ball deep, back, back. Hey, hey! Number five for Timmy. Hey, Tim Blackwell. Just popped it out of here, and the Cubs have themselves a one to nothing lead. That a boy, Timmy. He's hot. Let's hope he stays that way. If you ask Tim, he'll say, don't wake me up. If I'm dreaming, don't wake me up. There it is again. And all Henry can do is watch her sail in there. And the Cubs are out in front one to nothing. Nobody on, nobody out. Mike Tyson is up. You know, that's only the third home run pitch by Martinez this year. Here's Mike. He popped one out of here last night, too. Fly ball, left field, over near the line goes Orge. He's got it. One out. 
That brings up the pitcher, Lynn McLaughlin. Number 40. Blackwell's five homers. That's the first one he's hit on the road. The first four he all hit at Wrigley Field. So now he's done it on the road. He'll start a string there maybe on this road trip. Oh, great. Well, Timmy's answer to that will be, well, most of us long ball home run hitters uh, enjoy batting at Wrigley Field. Okay, here's McLaughlin. 1-8, lost 7. Foul ball. The rain delay kind of hurt him the last time out. One of the many. Of all, Joey Malfitano and uh, Billy Williams were both quoted in the paper today as saying that they never in their in their lives, all the years they've been around Wrigley Field, have seen a string of weather like we've had this last eight or ten days on this uh, this last homestand. That's high. Ball two, strike one. Well, Arnie just came on. He says, we haven't done a game at noon for a couple of days. <laughs> Don't say that. Tomorrow isn't here yet. <laughs> Ball two strike one. That's a drive left center. That's going to fall in for an extra base hit. It's going all the way to the fence out there. And one of the fans leaned over and got a hand on it. So that is now a ground rule double for Mr. McLaughlin. Lynn McLaughlin driving it out to left center. It took that high artificial turf bounce. Now one of the fans on the bleachers out there was able to get a hand on it. The second base umpire Steve Fields was running out there and he ruled that one. A ground rule double. So that brings up the shortstop to Jesus. As the Cubs threaten to score again here in this inning. Yvonne de Jesus fly ball to right the last time up on the 0-2 pitch. Ball one. They're in the Boston third. Red Sox two. The White Sox nothing. There's a drive left field. Base hit. And would you believe McLaughlin stays at second on this one. Not a question of whether he can score from second on a base hit to left. It's a question of whether he can even get to third. And the ball went out there so fast and was fielded so fast by Dane Orge that McLaughlin decided he better hold up. So, base hit. And that brings up third baseman Lenny Randall. Ball one. Cubs out in front with a run. Foul ball. One out. Ball one, strike one. Way outside, ball two, strike one. It's the Cub half of number three. They're in the Cleveland fifth now. Milwaukee one, Cleveland nothing. That's at Cleveland. Very high, ball three, strike one. That's a ball. The bases are loaded. And Buckner is the batter. Well, that puts Mr. McLaughlin on third. De Jesus is on second. Randall on first. And Buckner is up. 
And there's a little action in the Cardinal bullpen. That's Urea warming up down there. There he is. Here's Billy Buck. There's a ground ball. It's picked up by Hernandez. A run scores on this one because Keith Hernandez could not make a clean pickup. All he could do was block the ball, pick it up. He had to go to first to Martinez covering. And with that, of course, McLaughlin scored. Fielder, Jesus is on third. Randall is on second now. Two out. Cubs have two runs. There it is. And if Fernandes doesn't handle it cleanly, you know it has to be a tricky one because there's one of the great fielding first basemen in the game today. So Buckner is out. Had that overspin off that artificial surface and it just kept spinning away and bounced up on him and he did the right thing. Let him practically hit it in the body. Here's Kingman. Men on second and third. And there's a high foul ball. Out of play. Strike one. Dave Kingman popped up to the shortstop the last time up. Templeton moving out into short left center. Just a little old single could bring in a couple. Two out. Strike. Curveball. 0 and 2. If he'd hit the ball to straightaway center, he could get a triple. Man, are they giving him a hole in center to right center. There's your hole. Oh, look how long it takes to come back before you find an outfielder out there. <laughs> oh, and two. Bye. Oh, ball. Ball. And the Cubs have another run. Martinez just balked. That puts a run across and puts Lenny Randall on third as DeJesus gets a real gift run. Let's watch him. Started his motion. Then stopped. Then continued. That's not it, kid. You don't play it that way. All right, man on third. Two out. Three runs across for the Cubs now. And there's a ground ball by Kingman. Reach over to first. And that retires the side. Three runs for the Cubs, starting with a homer by Blackwell. Altogether, there were three Cub hits, no Evers, and a man left. So now we go to the Cardinal half of number three. Obergefell will bat first. Cubs three, Cardinal zero. They have done it uh, a lot with their group sales. They've done a good job with that. And they are going to be in a little of the position when September comes. When you're not in that race. There are 117,000 down to last year's figure, but they still have a very impressive over the million mark at this point. All right, a strike one pitch to Obergefell. Fouls it back. He's a 289 hitter with three homers and 32 runs batted in. He had a spell there where he hit a home run about every other day, but he really isn't that kind of a hitter. He's a good hitter, but he doesn't figure to hit that many home runs, but he's got three. They've been playing him at third base some. We haven't seen him there. One ball, two strikes as Mack wasted one. Obergefell will be followed by Reitz and then Martinez. They've been uh, platooning Obergefell at times with Reitz at third. There is a ball knocked down by Tyson. Look at this effort, and he got him. Beautiful play by Tyson. Take another look at this, and Cub fans can enjoy this effort. Now, this ball is well stroked on an artificial surface. Tyson just left his feet, then got up, and since the ball was hit so hard, he was able to throw a strike to Johnson and get him. Good play by Mike Tyson. Pirates have been out for quite a while. They're still leading 2-1. to one. They're bat in the fourth inning against Montreal. And they're underway motto at Baltimore. Yankees in Baltimore, 1-1. One one. They're now in the Yankees' second. Baltimore wins that one. It'll really tighten the noose. Roots reach hitting 264. That's a strike, a high one, but just did go across the letters. Four homers, 40 RBIs. 
And as usual, Reitz, who gets off to that great start, tailing off after the All-Star game. A curve ball, he hung it and got away with it because he bounced it right to Randall, and it's two away. How do you figure that Reitz? 400 hitter for the first couple Number of months 35. every year. Starts Richard out like this, and now he's down to 264 and batting eighth. And the story is that they want to deal him. Mm -hmm. I well, tell you, they did it before. They did it before and lived to regret it. That's right. There's some clubs that have got, uh, well, you'd think here with all their hitting, they could afford to carry his glove because he's just a fantastic third baseman. Well, what happened was they traded him to the Giants. I think the fellow out there pitching was involved in one of the deals, wasn't right. he? Right, and now they had Preston Gomez come down here and coach, and he must have hit 10,000 ground balls to Cruz trying to make a third baseman out of him, and that uh, experiment finally was abandoned. And I think that cost uh, that particular member of the Cruz family an outstanding big league career. Fouled it back because he had extremely high AAA credentials for two years. And I think that trying to make him a third baseman just destroyed his confidence. And he never was much of a hitter after that. You just don't go from those kind of AAA credentials as far down as he went without something bothering you mentally. Two strikes on Martinez. Lynn McLaughlin working with a three to nothing lead. <laughs> Lynn wondering, hey, where was that? You were talking about Brett earlier. What's he done? Yes, he just homered in the first inning. He now has a hitting streak of 27 straight. He's going after that Pete Rose Award. Longest streak. Came back with the same thing, an off-speed curve. He really wanted the call on the other one. That pitch wasn't near enough to be called a strike. It's two and two. Kansas City, three to nothing at the end of one against Toronto at Kansas City. Do they ever lose? <laughs> White Sox are at home with the Red Sox. Two to nothing, Bo Sox, third inning. Two and two, two away, nobody on, third inning. Now it's three. No, he finally called it on a delay. Oh, it took long enough to throw a right arm in the air, and everybody was bewildered. Take another look. All right, it's a strikeout, and it's the second one for Mac, and both have been caught. Took the first pitch for a call strike. Bounced out to third in the second inning. Martinez throws one in the dirt. One ball and one strike. There'll be action later in California. Braves will be at San Fran. Houston at San Diego. The Reds will be in L.A. Fouled off. You don't think they'll have anybody at Dodger Stadium tonight, do you? Oh, no. Uh -uh. They'll probably have to stand out in the street and hawk. Try to get a few people in. Fifth inning, and Larry Christensen still has that vastly improved Met Club shot out in the bottom of the fifth, four to nothing. Bombeck is pitching for the Mets. You were right about the Pirates being out a while. They now lead Montreal four to one in the fifth. One ball, two strikes to CJ. Jerry Martin will be next, followed by Blackwell, who got us going in that third inning with a leadoff homer. Bouncer to short. Templeton on to Hernandez a little toward the right field side, but Hernandez kept his foot on the bag. So it's one away. Number 28, center fielder Jerry Martin. Here's Jerry Martin popped to the catcher right in front of the screen in the second inning. Cubs about hit the Redbirds three to one, leading the score three to nothing. There have been no errors. Right. Foul up this way, Jack. <laughs> uh, so close, but yet so far away. Strike two. We'll be with you again tomorrow night. A little, little early. It'll be seven o'clock for Chicago viewers.
A ball and two strikes. Martin hitting. Blackwell on deck to the left. We're in the fourth inning. A let up and a humpback liner that bounces in front of Templeton. And it's two away. The chicken returns to Wrigley Field for an afternoon of shenanigans. That'll be Thursday, August 28th, when the Cubs play the Houston Astros. Well, why don't you join the chicken August 28th? This message furnished by the Chicago Cubs. Timmy Blackwell. Boy, what an amazing little guy he has been. He's just come through with some excellent catching and some good, consistent hitting. A strike, 0 and 1. Bouncer right at second. Should be easy for Obrick Fallon, it is. Martinez, who struggled in the third, comes back with a good, strong fourth. And we've now played three and a half. It's still the Cubs three, the Cardinals nothing. Going to the bottom of the fourth, Cardinals will have the top of the order due. Templeton, Scott, and Hernandez. Lynn McLaughlin, first time through the order, gave up a hit to Scott in the first. He was caught stealing. In the second, he walked Simmons, and Org bounced into a double play. So the minimum, thanks to those two situations. And it's three to nothing Cubs as Templeton steps in. Line drive, right field, base hit. Buckner plays it on one bounce. So Templeton leads it off with a single in the Redbird fourth. That is the second hit off McLaughlin. Jack, you had mentioned earlier about the cable systems that tie in and carry our games. I guess uh, over at that hotel today, we have people from Texas, New Mexico, Kansas, and this is the closest spot for them to come, so they came to take a look at the Cubs, the Cubs club they've been enjoying with us. That's a strike to Scott. He had a base hit in the first inning. Templeton at first. They might put something on here with Scott. That's the way it looks from our dugout. Bouncer second, that could be two, the flip one, fire two, and it's a double play. Second one of the night and 100 for the year. All right, sharply hit. Tyson had a good quick move to his right, gave that little shovel toss to Yvonne just where he wanted it. That runner bearing in on him, he fired it right across his forehead and got it to Big Cliff for the double play. It was a very good move by De Jesus because Templeton was really doing his job there on him. And with the uh, out going out of the base path, he was just going in hard. Thing that made the play original, though, the ball was hit sharply that Tyson had that good, quick move to his right. So it's two away. Hernandez the batter with a strike one count. Hernandez lined to left in the first inning to Kingman. Fouled off. He's in a hole 0 and 2. Nobody on, two down. They get somebody on, and we eliminate them one way or the other, either in a double play or a caught stealing. The 0-2 to Hernandez. Topped it foul. Third inning at Baltimore, Yankees and Orioles, 1-1. Yankees are starting to feel it a little. You can tell them the stories from last night's game. Reggie Jackson says, I'm hitting homers and we're losing. It is 30 second. It's the only run they got. Steve Stone again. Unbelievable story. Two hitter. I got a kick out of a story. He said, the last time I threw a two hitter, I lost. Rich, uh, Richie Zist beat me with a home run down in Texas, he said so. 
I determined right then and there that from now on all the two hitters I threw, I was going to have to be a little careful with them where I picked my spot. Line drive hit into left field off Hernandez bat. That's his stroke right there. That's the third hit. And it'll bring up Simmons, who walked in the second inning. After that hit, Blackwell went right out to talk to McLaughlin, and he's still out there. So Ted Simmons, two for five in the series. Walked the first time up tonight, was erased in a double play when Orge bounced into it in the second inning. Johnson holding against the runner, Hernandez. Running a little tour down there, pointing out a few sites of interest to Cliff. Boy, is that a reversal. Who was doing the barber jab there? All right, Simmons going to make uh, Big Mac wait a little bit. All right, now they're both ready. One ball and no strikes. Now, the last time, Simmons just missed hitting a line drive homer out of here down the right field line, and McLaughlin became careful with him and walked him. He doesn't have that luxury this time because there's a runner on in front of him. Hernandez who singled and Hendrick big RBI man is waiting on deck. A ball and no strikes. Fouled it back and he had a good cut. For a big swinger he's got that good level swing this guy. Defending batting champion right there, Hernandez. Can't count him out of repeating either. He's right up in the picture. Two balls and a strike. Simmons is a tough guy to pitch to. He's got power from either side. A let up and he sends a fly ball to right that will be caught by Buckner. Big Mac saying right there if you're going to hit it out on me you're going to do it all on your own. Threw him a changeup, Got him on a fly ball to right. No runs. Two hits. No errors. A double play and one Cardinal left. We've played four innings so far. So good. He's the most improved ball player on the Cubs roster, no doubt about it. The 2 1 fouled off. That jarred Simmons mask levels the count 2 and 2. And I'm just not saying offensively, but his throws to second base have improved tremendously in the last month. Two balls and two strikes. Silvio Martinez working for the Cardinals. Three and two. Martinez is not as sharp as we've seen him other times. Whereas McLaughlin has been. Good control. And he's using his fastball more tonight than normally. Threw a good off-speed pitch to Simmons, didn't yes. he? Fouled off out of play down the left side. It will not be playable. It'll be in the seats up above our bullpen area. Oh, he's got two or three speeds on his curve. Oh, yes. Lynn. Yes. Cuts it as he says. Yeah, he, it's uh, one of them is almost like a slider, but the other one is a good breaking curveball. It breaks down and away from right-handed hitters. I tell you, the the curveball he threw Hendrick was a big league curve. <laughs> Three two sends a fly ball into shallow center. Second baseman Oberkfell is there. That will bring up McLaughlin who doubled in the third and scored our second run. After he had doubled into Jesus hit that ball to left field do you think Lynn had a different look at that ball and thought it was going to be caught or what? Well, it was hit so sharply that he didn't think it was going to sink. He thought it was going to carry out to Orge. He just wanted to play it safe didn't move at all. He might have been caught uh, not being ready for that particular pitch from uh, Martinez. All right. Lynn McLaughlin with a double and a run scored. The Cubs are in front three to nothing. Scored all three in the third. 
Bounced foul behind Gene Kleins, the coach at first. Blackwell homered for run number one. Buckner got the second run home, and the third run came home on a block call. So that's the way it's happened for the Cubs here tonight, getting their three to nothing lead. The hits are even at three. Nobody's made an error on either side. And we're in the fifth inning. Second game of a four-game series. The 0-1 to Mack. Make it one and one. TV tomorrow night and again Sunday afternoon. And the club moves on to Atlanta. We'll televise from there on Wednesday and Thursday. Then over the next weekend, we'll be in Houston for three night games, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A let up. One and two. What is that change? Well, it's a straight change, and very seldom will a pitcher throw a change to another pitcher. But McLaughlin and Russell on our ball club are considered much better hitters than most pitchers that when they come up to that plate. Another change. Fly ball out into left, but this time Orge moves across, hauls it in, and it's two away. It was almost flirting with the same spot, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. And out of his nine hits, four of them has been, have been doubles. In fact, I think that lopsided game that he beat the Giants, what he had about three hits yeah. in that game, and they were doubles. So here's De Jesus, and on a warm, hot evening, he's going to take his time coming out of that on-deck circle, isn't he, with two yeah, away? He's going to give Mac a, a time enough to reach that dugout, get back in a tunnel where it's cool, if he can find a cool spot. He'll need to. Tony will probably be down there with an ice <laughs> towel, and another, somebody else will fan him, huh? Yeah. Here's Ivan. He had a base hit the last time up, eventually scored our third run. He got to come home when the block was called. Still one to one, Yankees at Baltimore. That's a strike. A Tommy John is pitching for the Yankees, Lou, and last weekend when they wanted him to be their stopper, it didn't turn out that way. If Baltimore would beat him again, boy, that'd be a psychological, oh, wouldn't it? Well, be Beating their boost. ace twice. Oh, and two to Ivan De Jesus. Randolph opened up that game hitting a home run off Flanagan for the Yankees run and Bumbrey came right back to hit a home run for Baltimore. <laughs> oh and two nobody on two down. Check swing foul right side. Boston now leads the White Sox three to nothing there in the fourth at 35th and Shields Kansas City. We were talking about Brett a while ago isn't he it something is tremendous. Kansas City leading Toronto three to one in the fourth. Jim Bibby's got a four to one lead over Montreal and Rogers in the fifth inning. No balls two strikes. Randall would be next. Looping liner base hit right field. Two straight hits for Yvonne. That is hit number four for the visiting number Cubs. De Jesus now with a six Randall. game hitting streak. Blackwell with a nine. Buckner and Randall haven't extended theirs yet. Randall has the longest one of the year on the Cubs, 14. And he's flirting with going after that, isn't he? Yes. Now we'll see if Joy Amalfitano gives De Jesus the green light here with two outs and the left handed hitter at bat, Randall. He's really got that front foot out on the carpet. They thought so too and yeah. took him back over there, didn't they? Yes, he had a tremendous lead. Foul back. Strike one to Randall. Buckner would be next. Hope you're in early for the leadoff man with Lenny. Very articulate fellow has pretty solid ideas about his abilities and what he can do with them. And they push Yvonne back but don't get him. Got that big lead as you can see. And he's going. Boy, what a jump he had. Simmons couldn't have thrown him out with a Gatlin go. Oh, no. no, he's he's got a tremendous lead. And he has Martinez has moved to first base down. 
and he gets back quickly. Now there's his lead. Look at that tremendous lead, and he's off right now. The throw gets there, but way too late. Templeton doesn't even make an attempt to tag to Jesus. He's already on the bag. That is our eighth stolen base against the Cardinals. And it's hard to believe it, but our leader, and that was his 29th, as you said, and yeah. that's his first stolen base against St. Louis. Uh -huh. You'd figure accidentally to have one, <laughs> wouldn't you? Lined into right field, a base hit. Hendrick charging. They're going to wave the runner. The throw will be cut off. Now they're going to have the runner in a rundown, and they didn't have to run him down, but the run scores because he got home before the action took place on Randall. Lou? Here's a line drive to right field for a base hit. Hendricks throws the ball in to the cutoff man, Hernandez. He looks around right there. There's the Jesus scoring, and now Randall trying to go to second, wants to stop, and he slips, and then he's tagged out by Templeton. So the play went 9-3-6, but the Cubs add another run to their lead. It's very embarrassing for an infielder to have to wait for the ball like this. This ball hits in front of the plate, bounces on one hop. Look at Randall has to wait for the ball to come down, and then fires to Johnson, but Hendricks beats it out for a base hit. It just as I say, you get frustrated. And sometimes on that play, you'll see it. It's such a temptation to throw it before you got yes. it, and then you don't find the handle. <laughs> you want to jump up and get the ball, too. <laughs> Here's Orange, bounced into a double play in the second inning. It's a base hit, of course, the fourth Cardinal hit of the evening. Otten is throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. We haven't seen much of him. And there he is. So yep. Herzog's hoping he gets down to that ninth place hitter. That was what inning. you talked about at length the other day, about the manager thinking ahead, right. being ready for all eventualities. Boy, you guys, we weren't here televising last night, of course, but it was the first time. Remember how tough Littlefield was against us in that series at home? Yes. Finally uh, did something with him last night, huh? But uh, I thought Herzog did not give Littlefield time enough to really warm up completely, and I, I felt that Littlefield was not throwing at his best. Took something off of that one, came inside, two balls and a strike. Cubs are in front, four to nothing. Well, Urea, who warmed up earlier, is now throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. It's three and one to Orge. Obert Fell will be next. We don't want to give up that many base on balls. We gave up ten last night. That really hurt us. And a ball that went about 30 feet hurt you. Yes. Capilla making the play. I, I thought if he let the ball drop, it might go foul, but he made the play. And then hesitated while his arm was in motion throwing the first base and threw it down the right field line. Lined and oh, caught. Mike Tyson has been an acrobat here tonight. I'm telling you, the play he made on Obert fell in the third and now this one, just two tremendous reactions. Uh, we thought that was a great play. Look at this play, a line drive. And Tyson dives to make the catch and rolls over but holds onto that ball. Beautiful play, fantastic. That one deserves three stars. The first one was two stars in my book. Boy, he's <laughs> he just really pumped up playing against these old teammates. Oberk foul in the third was the other guy robbed by Tyson. That was in the third inning. One away. That's a strike. Reach will be next. They've come out with the attendance figures already here. Approaching 30,000. We get the exact figure. Off speed on a breaking pitch, one and one. Hendrick at first with an infield hit, a high chopper to third. CJ trying to hold him close. Hendrick stole a base here last night. There's an off speed curve again, and he missed with it. 
What do you got for figures, Lou? Paid attendance, 28,888. Total in the house, 29,945. Cliff Johnson came in to talk to Mac. Now Blackwell's going to talk to him. Appears to have struggled a little bit on the last two hitters. I mentioned Henrik stole a base here last night. He doesn't do it that often. He's only tried it six times, but he's made it five out of the six. They're trailing four to nothing. Oberk fouled the batter with a 2-1 count. Max had a little discussion with two catchers. Cliff Jensen started as a catcher. He came in for a chat. Blackwell went out for one. Let's see if it helped. 2-1 pitch. Fouled off up to the left side. 2-2. Two and two. They've gone to the seventh at New York. Christensen. And you would have expected this, I imagine, Lou, since Christensen hadn't pitched in so long. What was he on the 60-day disabled? Oh, yes. uh, they've got Tug McGraw in there now, and they're leading four to nothing. That's all that I'm, I'm quite sure that Green wanted out of Christensen. Five or six good innings. Line to right, and Buckner will drift back and take it. A couple of well-hit balls in this inning, Lou. Every one of them have been hit well except the base hit. Let me tell you. I don't know whether Lynn is starting to tire or, or what, but the Cardinals are a good hitting ball club. Hausman is pitching for the Mets now, so both of the starters are gone there. And Montreal has made a change. They got their newest acquisition, John Diacquisto, in there. Two away after the high, the old Baltimore chap, wasn't it, Don Hendricks hit? <laughs> There's a drive that's going to go foul the minute it leaves the trademark off Kenny Reitz's bat. Texas leading Detroit six to one now in the seventh inning. A let up after he hit that high fly ball. I thought you were going to be down there in those pregame ceremonies riding that bull, good kid. Oh no. I know no you, way. you begged off with that bad knee, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. No way. I got out of it because I said I had to do the leadoff, man. <laughs> I'd have found something. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd was yelling for Buck to get out of it. All right, one ball, two strikes, everybody back in place. Reach the battery, bounce to third in the third. Lynn McLaughlin working with a four to nothing lead. Oh, he's giving that gum a workout. And he gets it. Just fired one right past him, didn't he? Yeah, he'd shown him a breaking ball and then an off-speed pitch, so that fastball probably looked about a foot and a half <laughs> quicker, didn't it? Yes. It's his third strikeout, the first one on a swinging strike. No runs, one hit, no trouble after the leadoff single, no errors, and Hendrick was left. We've played five innings, and the Cubs trying to get even in the series are in front of the Cardinals, four to nothing. Obergfell has moved from second to third. Reitz is out of the game. Ramsey is the new second baseman. And the new pitcher is John Urea. And to tell you about him and go on here, here we go with Jack and Lou. All right. Cubs out in front, four to nothing. They've out hit the Cardinals five to four. Nice position to be in. It's fun to walk in and see that one up there, Lou, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that Tyson has been a, a tiger at second base with his great defensive play. Overfell at third, Templeton at short, Ramsey at second, Hernandez at first, as Buckner steps in. Ball game in the sixth inning. The pitcher, John Urea. Well, Urea so far has a record of four and one, earned run average 3.60. Struck out 17, and uh, rather uh, walked 17, struck out a dozen so far this year in 25 innings. That doesn't speak too well for uh, relief pitching as a statistic on his part. Maybe that's a little bit misleading, Lou. No, I don't believe it is because the Cardinals have been hurting in the bullpen in their relief work. And of course, Whitey must be flip-flopping here with Reitz having made the last out. That means that Urea will take his place in the batting order. And Oberkfell, having moved over to third, Ramsey, 
will bat in the pitcher's spot. And there is a 4-3 put out now. Buckner has tossed out Ramsey to Hernandez. One away. Here's a fine play by the young Ramsey moving to his right. The only way that he can make this play as it hugs the AstroTurf is to backhand it, then stop and fire. You cannot get in front of that ball and make the play. So you youngsters moving to your right quickly as a second baseman, it's not showboating at all. If you make that backhanded, one-handed grab of that ground ball with the glove. Strike, big swing by Dave on the curve. Still hasn't got that timing back even though he did get a homer last night. Dave, you, you mean? Yes. Yeah, he, he's, they're throwing him sidearm curveballs away. He got three hits uh, last night. Yeah, one of them, of course, was uh, a two-off single to right field. He just poked off the end of the bat. Of the bat. Went to right field. Says we'll give him that base hit any time with two out and nobody on. Well, they have the shift time now at the present time, so this is the same setup when Dave went to right field. There he went. Tried to, but he grounds out to the shortstop. So that's Templeton over to Hernandez, two out. Cliff Johnson, the first baseman, is up. Cliff Johnson. Martinez, in 13 starts, has two complete games this year. This was his 14th start. Why he felt the need for a change? This ball club has played pretty good ball under Mr. Herzog, 32 and 27 under Whitey. Projecting that, Lou, we figured out that uh, right now the Cardinals, if they had played that way all year, would be just two games out of first place. Ball one, strike one. And you'd have a ball club with different attitude instead of being 12 out, two games out. One and one. That's a strike. Ball one, strike two. To Johnson. What I mean is there's be more incentive in their play. Pittsburgh now leads Montreal six to one. Montreal is at bat in the sixth inning. Bibby still going for Pittsburgh. Rogers is out of there now. DeQuisto, they just got him, is now pitching for Montreal. One and two. Fly ball, fairly deep to center. Tony Scott is there. And that retires the side. The Cubs are down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. This takes us now to the Cardinal half of number six. Ramsey, the second baseman, will lead off. Cubs, four. Cardinal, nothing. Jerry Martin has moved over to right field. And Jesus Figueroa is now in center field. And Kingman is out of the game. Let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Continental Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Television, Chicago. Jack Brickhouse, along with Lou Boudreau and Milo Hamilton here at St. Louis, score the ball game. Cubs four, Cardinals nothing. Our producer director in these games, as always, Arnie Harris. And it's a big, big night in St. Louis with a nice, enthusiastic crowd. So far, what a wise, a real good night. Uh, Lynn McLaughlin trying for that ninth win and also trying to square up for his lifetime. Lou, he's 81 and 82 in the majors in his lifetime. Moving into the sixth inning, and Ramsey, Mike Ramsey, will bat first. Ball one. Ramsey is a switch hitter. They specialize in switch hitters on this ball club. They've got Ramsey, they got Scott, they got Simmons, they got Templeton. Boy, they got switch hitters. Strike. One and one. Ramsey is a 278 hitter as a lefty, though he's only a 220 hitter. Foul ball. Ball one, strike two. Number 22, Will Walker, now in left field. Jesus Figueroa in center field. And number 28, Jerry Well, tomorrow's going to be Sykes against Kruko. 
And let's hope they don't back that Sykes up like they have the last couple of ball games. <laughs> they, 16 to nothing yeah. the other day against <laughs> Montreal and 14 runs uh, they got him before that. They scored a lot of runs for him. One and two. Strike. Ramsey strikes out. Slipped that one past him pretty good. Luke. Yes, he's been throwing the fastball very well tonight, and he's got a, he has a good one. Now here's Templeton. He has 136 base hits at this point. How do you like his chances to reach 200 this year, Lou? Oh yes, I think he'll do it. You do? Yes. He, he's he's good hitter. Makes contact. Even though he's been injured and on the disabled list, but he's hitting the ball well. He needs, uh, he needs what? 64 base hits. And how many games have we got left here? Let's add it up. We played 100, and this is their 113th game. Ground ball. The Hazers gobbles it up and throws. Save to throw. Pulls Johnson off the bag, says Tater. Let's see what they call that. That's, That's a, a base, base hit. hit. De Jesus makes a great play on this AstroTurf because that ball was hit well. De Jesus, you'll see him go to his left. Watch hit De Jesus go to his left. Reaches out, gets the ball right on the end of the glove, the fingertips, and then throws sidearm. And the ball sort of sails on De Jesus and pulls Johnson off the bag. A base hit. That's Templeton's second hit of the evening. You know farther off than they usually are when they call him <laughs> out. <laughs> Here's Tony Scott. There's a line shot to center. And it's caught by Figueroa, all of which makes Mr. Amalfitano look like a genius. Great. great for play. the move of putting Figgy out there just now. Here's a great play. That Scott hits the ball well. A line drive, sinking line drive, but Figueroa comes in quickly. And then dives after the ball and keeps that glove up high, showing the umpires that he made the catch. Two out. Hernandez the batter. Well, Templeton now has 137 base hits, and he will have 49 games left after tonight. He's going to need then what? Uh, 63. I think he can that's, do it. That's that's a lot of hits, but he can get his two or three hits a game. Ball one. If he does, he'll lead the league in hitting. Well, he'll have to hit 400 the rest of the year. That's what I'm asking. Ball one. Ball one, strike one. Boston four, White Sox nothing. They're in the Boston sixth at Chicago. One and one. Very well hit, way back there, look out, back, back, back. It is high off the wall, it is not a home oh, run. Oh yes it is, it's a home is run. It? Yes. Wait a minute, it, it hit goes the into his home run trot, and I guess it hit the yellow part, and that's it. It hit the pillar, Jack, high above the yellow, Marky. And the first base umpire, Tata, called it immediately. Oh boy. When we saw that ball bounce back in the field, yeah, it did come it back. It looked like it was coming off the high part of the wall, but instead, it was off the pillar out there. So Keith Hernandez now has his 11th home run. Watch this again. Watch the pillar right above Martin's head as he goes back to the wall. He leaps. Martin leaps, but it hits the pillar right at the white spot. There it is. There Hit the go. right there, yeah. and then rebounds back in. Well, that makes the score of this ball game now four to two. And there's another fly ball to right. This one should be caught. And Martin running in grabs it. And that takes care of the side as Simmons flies out. But with Templeton on base, and he should not have been on base, the throw that the Hazers threw should have been on target. Hernandez hits a home run. Two runs, two hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of six, Cubs four, Cardinals two. And we got ourselves a four to two ball game here. The Cubs out in front. We got some signs floating around this place right now. Maybe by the time the weekend's over, we'll be able to pick up some of them with a little better lighting during the day or maybe earlier in the evening. But anyway, let's concentrate now on the Cubs and Jerry Martin leading off. And there's ball one. 
You know, something else is this game heads for the finish. There's another thing heading for the finish, uh, and it's a big finish out there at Malcolm X College, something of which they can be real proud. Strike. They've got the very, very lengthy and exciting Abe Saperstein Foundation basketball tournament that's been going on now since the 15th of June. They've got a pro division, a high school division. Everything's free out there. And some of the greatest basketball players in the country, including some of the great pros, are playing there at Malcolm X. Sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes in the evening. So we congratulate the Abe Saperstein Foundation. And particularly, we congratulate Abe's daughter, Eloise Saperstein Berkeley, on helping put this one together, along with Director of Athletics Wilson out there at Malcolm X. It's a fine, fine project, and they should take a bow. Ball one, strike two. <clears throat> Jerry Martin followed by Blackwell, then Tyson. That's a little inside. Ball two, strike two. Pittsburgh six, Montreal three. Pittsburgh at bat in the seventh now, Milo. That, that's, that's not quite over yet either. They got to call the in there now. That's a deep foul fly. Ball two, strike two. Well, we had mentioned earlier about McLaughlin being hurt by the home run ball by the Cardinals and two other starts and got hurt here tonight by Hernandez on another one. Ball three, strike two. That's a well hit ball to center. Tony Scott chasing over for it. He's got it. There he got pretty good wood on that one. That'll bring up Blackwell. Timmy Blackwell hit a home run leading off the third inning. Well, the standards become more demanding every every year in sports, not only in baseball, but the quality of the sport has to be improving every year. Guys are just uh, doing things with bats and gloves this, these days and with footballs and golf balls and basketballs that just are unbelievable sometimes. I took a look in the paper today at the scores in that Westchester Classic. Okay, you shoot a 69, right? That's pretty well under par. 69, huh? Which... You know what that'll get you? Throw to first, two out. You shoot a 69 yesterday at the Westchester Classic, you'll be in a 16-way tie for 21st place. That's something. Well, they're stronger. They're playing for those big purses. The equipment has improved year by year. Remember when about 10 foot six won the pole vault? Guy could shoot par there and probably miss the cut. <laughs> I shoot par, I'd take a sabbatical to celebrate. Ball one. Mike Tyson, second baseman. In my crowd, if I break 95, I get the hustler tag. <laughs> One and one. Strike. Ball one, strike two. The superstars of any generation are going to stand out. Mays, DiMaggio, Ruth, Cobb, Hornsby. Those guys all would have been great. And some of today's stars would have been great in their day. There's a line shot, right field. It is caught by George Hendrick. He held the ball and dropped the cap. And that, if he has the choice, is what he prefers to do. So Tyson's out. No runs, no hits. No errors, nobody left. So the folks here will take a seventh inning stretch now with the score. Cubs four, the Cardinals two. 
Spanish Town, the plate umpire. Got burned up at him. Well, Fred Bird gave uh, Bruce a kiss. <laughs> and that might not have bothered him, but then Fred Bird walked away and went as if it was a bad taste and kiss. <laughs> and I don't know whether Froming knows it or not, but the Fred Bird tonight is a girl. Oh, really? Yeah. The only reason I know it, because I was in Joe Cunningham's office when they came in and said, you know, tonight the girl who oh, I didn't gives the that. other guy a little relief once in a while is in the costume tonight, which must be 183 degrees in there. Ball one now. The leadoff hitter is George Hendricks. And McLaughlin got that one past him. One and one. Guess who's going down to the Cub bullpen? I get three guesses. One's all you get, pal. Well, the first two need. don't count, right? <laughs> there he is, number 42. Ball two, strike one. Hendrick has a call third strike and a single. He'll be followed by Orge and then Obertfell. Cubs, four runs, five hits. Cardinals, two runs, six hits. Last two innings, there have really been some shots off McLaughlin. The word may be that if he gets in any kind of trouble to start this inning, that bullpen's going to work and they won't wait long. Well, the word is now they're watching at the Illinois State Fair at Springfield. One of the folks taking a relief from the activity down there. Congratulations on another great straight fair at our nation state's capital. Ball two, strike one. A little high. Ball three, strike one. Well, I'll tell you who else is down here from the Cub organization. Toots Loeb from group sales. And her group of friends are here. Three and one. Foul ball. Ball three, strike two. So not too many people are watching the store. He doesn't believe in pulling those pants legs up, does he? Now, I thought maybe when Herzog took this club over, he might be asked to go by the dress code of the day, but he hasn't. Three and two. High hopper, fair ball. And there's the long throw. And he's out, even though Johnson had to leave his feet for the ball. He got that foot back down on the bag in time. Here's one he's throw now. Heaven takes the high bounce. So Lenny hasn't got much time. Just rid of that ball hard and fast and high. One out. Henry got a base hit on a ball almost like that the last time. They, <laughs> Lenny's got to be saying, hey, hit that ball a little flatter. Now here's Dane Orge. One out. Very high pop-up should be caught. Who wants it? It is De Jesus with Figueroa. And De Jesus almost having one of those things out there. Number 24, second baseman and overfell. Figueroa almost becomes a jockey here. <laughs> and after it was over, De Jesus uh, had a little talk. Yeah, don't try to say it in English. <laughs> you know me, Figgy. I know you. We speak Spanish. You yell in Spanish, I'm going to catch it. <laughs> no, I'm going to catch it. No, no, no. What I mean is I'm going to catch what you say. As high as uh, Yvonne's hands were catching that ball, it's just fortunate that that little collision didn't bump it out of there. That's right. It's, it's just fortunate that he is tall enough to get away with that one. Here's Overspell. Fastball inside, ball one. Two out. Foul ball. Well, I'd like to see Lynn get through this inning now and be able to work into the eighth. Maybe the fifth and sixth were his hurdles. They didn't score in the fifth, but boy, there were two balls really well hit. That's a ball. 
Two and one. Foul ball, out of play to the left. The ladies PGA Tour coming to Chicago area in force for this year's third annual Variety Club or Cups in an LPGA Pro-Am Golf Tournament Monday at Evanston Golf Club. That's the 18th. Some of the truly big names in ladies golf. A lot of them. Proceeds, of course, for a marvelous cause. Carry out the programs for Non-resident, mentally retarded children who can enjoy the facilities of the Variety Club Karen Cups in the center at Little City in Palatine. That's too high. Ball three, strike two. Each player and his lady will be the guests of Arnold Morton Sunday night for pre-celebration festivities. Arnie's there on State Street. There's a high foul ball. And racing over is Lenny. Did he or didn't he? He did! That a boy, Lenny. Beautiful. Fan Bruce, interference. Bruce Fleming has ruled fan interference, and that's that. Okay. Take them any way you can get them. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. Let's look at this again. And Bruce Fleming says that is fan interference, pal. And at the end of seven, the score of the ball game is still the Cubs four, the Cardinals two. The New Rhea so far, and he's chipped in with a double, scored a run, lined out to left center in the fifth inning, one for two. Moving fastball away, strike one. They're now in the Montreal eight to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh six, Montreal three. To Colby and Bunsen are the pitchers now. Eckersley's got the White Sox down seven to nothing in the sixth. Two strikes on McLaughlin up to the top with the Jesus and Randall. Phillies are going to win one from the Mets. They're winning six to nothing. The Mets at bat in the eighth. Go to foul off. Old, old Tud pitching now in relief of Christensen who came off the. Disable this though for a start tonight. They got what they wanted. They got six shutout innings out of him. Miller is in pitching for the Mets now. They're in the Yankee fifth. Yankees three, Baltimore one at Baltimore still. That game was delayed at the start by rain. One and two. Urias really got some tail away in his fastball to left hand hitters here tonight. We don't have anybody on base against him. He's retired six in a row. One ball, two strikes. Popped it left side. Oberk fell over. Templeton's there behind him. Oberk fell will make the play. And it's one down. De Jesus, two for three, will be the batter. Of course, here in this ballpark, the third baseman, the first baseman have lots of room on a play like that. They better be able to cover a lot of territory. They can stay in shape just by playing every day in this park. <laughs> Kansas City with George Brett continuing to be hot, leading Toronto three to one in the seventh. The Jesus has singled twice, stolen a base, scored twice. Liner into right field, and it bounces by Hendrick and goes to the wall with the Jesus speed. He's going to make it to third easily. Cookie may wave him. No, now he puts it up. He was waving him all the way to third, waved until he got there. Then when he saw the ball finally coming in, Cookie says, uh-uh, stay right there. It's his third triple, and here it is again. Now watch Hendrick come in. He tried to shoestring this ball, Jack. Surprise you a little with the, with the two run difference. Now he's got to run and get it because it goes clear out to the Astro logo on the warning track. The Jesus was digging and then Cookie put up the red flag and he skids to a halt. You know, the Jesus, as he headed for third on that one, did you notice the style of running he has? It's, it's almost a track man style, almost a guy running the 220. 
Oh, he's got those good, powerful legs, too. Watch his arms, too. Uh, Arnie, any chance we can see that run all over again? Randall, the batter. Drawn in infield. Shortstop will grab it. No chance to score on that one. Watch, watch the style of running on DeJesus here. Let's pick him up rounding second. And he'll really be digging. Watch the his facial expressions also when we pick him up. Look at there that. He comes. You want to see a picture book running style? And look at him looking at Cookie. If you're going to turn me loose, turn me loose. All right. All right, Whitey Herzog is on his way, and they're going to bring in a left-hander here with Buckner. Do as the batter with a runner at third and two away. And Figueroa is on deck, so they bring the lefty in. Urea is gone. Urea pitched two and two-thirds, one hit. The runner at thirds, his responsibility. The lefty is Hood. The announcement on Hood. So the change made here in the eighth inning after two away. And you take a look at the style. Hood is appearing in his 25th game. All but four of those in relief. Good ERA, 275. Two wins, four losses, has not recorded a save. We saw some of this fellow early in the year. See how effective he was against us. Well, he worked twice in relief. We won both of those games. He worked two and a third, two hits, one run it was earned. Randall drove in the run against him. Buckner drove in a couple of runs against him another time, but they weren't charged to him. Walked two, struck out two. In the one game, he was wild, pass ball, and then Randall drove in a run. So that's what happened in the two appearances that we have seen Hood. So Bill Buckner 0 for 3 came in with a six game hitting streak. Oh, would you like to see him continue on that streak here? He got credit for an RBI in the third inning on a bounce out. In fact, he's grounded out every time up twice to second, once to the first baseman. Third inning with the bases loaded. He hit a real hard smash at Hernandez who knocked it down and got one. Pirates held Montreal in the eighth. Pirates at bat in the eighth now leading six to three. All right, Hood ready to work to Buckner with a runner at third and two down. Breaking pitch misses ball one. Now they got a right-hander throwing in their bullpen. That's Otten. He had thrown briefly earlier. Let's see if Billy Buck can pick us up here now and not waste that triple by the Jesus. It's four to two Cubs. Ball gets away. They're going to give us a run. Five to two, Chicago. Wild pitch. All right, now watch this. Threw that ball right down into the dirt. It didn't give Simmons any kind of a bounce at all. It scooted right through the wicket. And Jesus will step on the pace station right there. And that's run number five. Well, one on a balk, one on a wild pitch. Take him anywhere we can get him, Milo. You said it, because last night was a tough game to live with. I want to tell you, score nine and come up empty. Here's the 2-0 to Billy Buck. A high fly ball, right field, pretty well hit, but it's not going to carry just short of the track. So the wild pitch helped. One run, one hit, a triple, a wild pitch, no errors, and nobody left. We played into the middle of the eighth at Bush Memorial in St. Louis, and the Cubs are in front, five to two. Often that's still bouncing on Sheffield. Good-looking young hitter, this fellow. 
Pitch hitting for cargo pitcher Don Hood. Number 10, Leon Durham. Leon Durham batting 250, five homers, 22 runs batted in. He's batting for Hood. Ramsey will be next. Bouncer to Kelleher who just, oh, no, that's Tyson. Kelleher's playing third. So Tyson, who had made two unbelievable plays earlier in the game, boots the ball, hit right at it. Remember the acrobatics he did earlier on Oberkfell and Orange? Now here's a ball that looks to be hit right at him and it hits off the heel of his glove and he can't handle it. That is an E4. It's the first error of the game on either side. And Ramsey's going to be called back in favor of Terry Kennedy, pinch hitter. The announcement on Kennedy. Number 16, Terry Kennedy. Bob Kennedy, our general manager, his father, of course. <laughs> Here's the dilemma he's in, looking on, hoping that his team, the Cubs, can hang on, but got to have some feeling for a son who's up there batting against him also. Kennedy is batting for the year, 253, three homers and 24 runs batted in. Kennedy did not appear in last night's game. Strike called. Kennedy against us is three for 17 with three RBIs. Durham, who just reached on an error, told you he was hot in that series against us at home when he went five for 10, including a homer, and drove in four. Fouled off, got him in a hole, two strikes. Kennedy is batting for Ramsey. So two pinch hitters in a row employed by Whitey Herzog. Houston and San Diego underway, second inning, no score. The Mets are up for their last shot in the ninth. The Phillies lead them eight to nothing. Wasted it with an off-speed high pitch, one and two. Montreal up for their last shot at Pittsburgh, trailing the Pirates seven to three. Atlanta with Necro and Whitson for the Giants getting underway at Candlestick. A pair of 41, Seaver for the Reds, Royce for the Dodgers. They're getting ready to go at L.A. Now McLaughlin steps off. One ball, two strikes. This is our 11th game of the year with the Redbirds. We've won four, dropped six, and four games played here. We've split two and two right now McLaughlin trying to hang on to a five to two lead and we've got you know who throwing in the bullpen yeah he's ready it doesn't take money to warm up in this humidity and heat a high fly ball left center pretty well hit and caught by Buckner just to the edge of the track. Now the runner at first is going to have to hurry back. It was close, but he made it. Durham was clear around second. You can't cut across. You've got to touch that bag. Kennedy gave that ball a pretty good ride to the opposite side, I want to tell you. Buckner got back there to make the play. Then he wheels it in. And Durham's got to really get on his horse and go back. Hit that dirt and he makes it. He didn't miss too much of being doubled off. So with that ball being pretty well hit, Suter is throwing again in the bullpen. And now we've got Gary Templeton two for three. He has scored one of their two runs. He was on when Hernandez hit a home run in the sixth inning. High curve, ball one. Yankees now lead Baltimore four to one in the sixth. Game is at Baltimore. Gary Templeton. He'll be just as good as he cares to be. 
He's a little like the girl with the curl in the middle of her forehead. There's a line drive in the right center. That's got overspin. It'll take off and go to the wall. Durham will be waived. Templeton will end up at third with a triple. So the error on Tyson Hurt. Templeton's third hit. Pitch was away and he still jerked it. Triple and an RBI. That's hit number seven for the Cardinals. Templeton has three of them. There he is standing with his first triple tonight. And for the year, Templeton now has nine triples. It gives him 39 runs batted in. Blackwell is out talking to McLaughlin. Suter's ready. He's just waiting for somebody to wave a flag. So the Cardinals are back to within two. Templeton drives in Durham, who had reached as a pinch hitter, an error on Tyson. And now Scott will be the batter, one for three. Joey is up. McLaughlin might be looking at the guy he's got to get in order to continue in this game because the last three innings, they've belted the ball around on him. Cardinals have now gone ahead in the hit column, seven to six, but the Cubs continue to lead five to three, but Scott represents the tying run at the plate. Throw over to Keller, but wasn't close. And with that, Joey Amalfitano is on his way. Templeton, by getting three hits tonight, has gone to the top of the heap in the National League at 3.30. Well, you're in the eighth inning. Well, if you don't call on your Cy Young Award winner now, when do you call on him? Suter is running in. Suter is coming in. McLaughlin works seven and a third. Three runs. The man at third is his responsibility. Struck out four, walked one. So the inning started with Durham as a pinch hitter, and he reached on an error on Tyson on a ball hit right at him. When you figure this game out, you'll be able to write a book. Tyson made two plays that were absolutely acrobatic jabs. Obert fell in the third and Orge in the fifth. Then Durham hits a ball right at him and <laughs> his glove turns to iron. Kennedy almost hit one out to the opposite side, but Buckner caught it on the edge of the left center field warning track. Then Templeton tripled through the gap in right center. That was the knockout punch for McLaughlin and Suter is coming on for the 44th time. He has 24 saves, three wins, seven losses, respectable ERA, certainly 240. McLaughlin was showing signs of tiring, although the error hurt him more than anything else in this inning. Suter facing the Cardinals. Well, the last time Suter faced Scott, he retired him twice in relief in Chicago. Once on the ground a second, and the other time on a sacrifice bunt. Against the Cardinals, Suter has worked five times, one win, one loss, and two saves. That's strike two. He saved the game for Hernandez, and he saved the game for Capilla. He's only had one uh, bad outing against them. That was the last time he looked at them. He gave up three runs. But the other four times, he was superb. One ball, two strikes. Suter in relief of McLaughlin trying to get out of this situation with a runner at third and only one out, and he just struck out Scott. 
Now the sacrifice fly is no longer a possibility. And let's take a look at what happens with this pitch. Number three, seven, baseman, Keith Hernandez. Here it is. Oh, was that ball moving? Here is Hernandez, single and a two-run homer. Cubs five, Cardinals three, bottom of the eighth inning. Suter looking at Hernandez, who's two for three. I know you probably have mentioned it, Milo, but it's worth repeating. Philadelphia shut out the Mets tonight, eight to nothing, a combined shutout for Christensen and McGraw. That is a ball, and they beat Bombach. Yes, and... Uh, Pittsburgh has a four run lead now as Montreal comes to bat in the ninth inning their last chance looking at Tacovi. Pittsburgh seven Montreal three. One ball one strike to Hernandez. Look at that big deep breath. <laughs> White Sox are losing seven to nothing in the seventh to the Red Sox. Two balls and a strike. Suter wanted that call, so did Blackwell. He doesn't take long. He knows what he's going to throw. Two balls, two strikes. Now it's Hernandez's turn to score. Cubs put up a beef on the preceding pitch. Now Hernandez shows his disdain. Two balls, two strikes, and two away. Plate umpire Stella getting it from both sides for a moment. Templeton's at third, an RBI triple put him there. Whoa, was that close. Three and two. The on-deck hitter is Simmons. Boy, you're jumping out of a frying pan into a fire when these two guys bat back to back. A little looping liner and a base hit, and it's five to four. He fought off a pitch in on his fist. The tying run is on for the Cardinals. Well, Milo, coming up now, one of those confrontations, it's a good ticket seller. One of the great hitters in the game, Simmons against one of the great pitchers, Suter with the game on the line. That's right. Simmons walked in the second. Fourth inning fly to right. Sixth inning fly to right. Hernandez with his third RBI of the game. A two-run homer and now a one-run single. DeJesus tried to time his leap. There's a runner going. A bouncer right side. Tyson's there. Inning is over. Boy, did he get a good hitter there. They score a pair. On two hits, there was one error that hurt, and one man was left. We've now played eight innings. The Cubs are still in front, but it's tough and tight. Cubs five, Cardinals four. And Tony Scott is out of the ball game. Ramsey's out of the ball game. Simmons is out of the ball game. Stag. And of course, Don Hood. record 0 and 4 and no saves but in 17 ball games earned an average 7.50 that's a ball ball three strike two to figure out came on in the sixth inning place of Kingman is a defensive move he'll be followed by Johnson then Martin there's a high fly short left and calling forward is orange he's got it one away. That brings up Cliff Johnson. Well, here's a guy that is really overdue, Jack. He's fighting an 0 for 20 right here. And that is really going in the opposite direction because he was just that hot about a week ago. Ball 
two, two and oh. Played him part tonight as Dick Stello. Terry Tata at first, Steve Fields at second, Bruce Fremming is the umpire at third. Cubs five runs, six hits. Cardinals four runs, eight hits. Little off the mark outside. Ball three, no strikes to Cliff Johnson. Pirates did it. They beat Montreal seven to three so that in that big weekend they took the first step. And the Yankees have a real good shot at winning from Baltimore. They're ahead four to one with Baltimore bat on the sixth. That's a strike. He was taking all the way. Ball three, strike one. Gene Klein's coaching at first, with the Rojas at third. High foul, out of play. Three and two. Three strike two. Foul ball again. Three and two. He's followed by Martin. Come on, Big Cliff. Get a hold of one here. This is Jim Otten. Down ball, back a third, and it scoots under Oberfell's glove into left field, so Johnson's on base. That'll be an error. No base hit. Let's watch it again. Oberfell has been playing quite a bit of third base for this ball club. That one looked like it might have hit on the seam and skidded. Yeah, where that AstroTurf picks up again right off the skinned off part, it hit it and just didn't give him a true bounce. Scott Thompson will run. Well, they took advantage of a boot. Let's see if we can. Well, so far tonight, the Cubs have been handed some pretty good breaks. They can't complain about bad luck up till now. They got one run across on a balk, another one on a wild pitch. Now the big trick is to hang on to that advantage. They're ahead five to four. We're in the ninth. And that one's high inside. It's just over his head. Ball one. George Hendrick and Durham in left center and right. Obergfell, Templeton, Phillips, Hernandez, the infield third to first, the battery, Otten and Kennedy. High foul out of play to the right. Ball one, strike one. Phillips will bat second. Otten's batting in the four spot. Durham in the eighth, of course, and Kennedy in the ninth, where they pinch it. Strike. There's the runner going for second, and he is out. Hit and run. Martin swung and missed. Scotty Thompson is gunned down. Here it is again. Didn't get too much of a jump on it to start with. And here's Kennedy's shot. And Phillips lets him slide right into it. Two out. Ball one, strike two. Very high pop up out back of second base. Who wants this one? Here's Templeton. And that takes care of that. 
No runs, no hits, an error, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the night. The score, the Cubs five, the Cardinals four. Cubs five, Cardinals four. Let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Continental, Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. Stay tuned for the News 9 following the ball game right here on WGN Television, Chicago. And Suter throws a strike to Henry. Strike one. Cubs have this one coming, Milo. They're only 10 and 20 in one run ball games. That's low. One and one. And last night was one of those one runners in the wrong direction. Ball two, strike one. Foul ball. You know, the Cardinals beat the Cubs in that second game of that series in Chicago with a four run ninth inning. And one of the key blows was a base hit by Hendrick in the ninth inning off Mr. Suter following a double by Simmons. That was followed by a base hit by Kennedy, and that was all for Suter. They bombed him out of there. So Suter has a good outing coming against these fellas. Joey's got his bullpen working just in case. That's a high foul ball. And Scotty takes care of that one. So, that's one away. Number 19, Dane That brings Orr. up Dane Orr. Scott Thompson playing in the ninth inning here in place of Thompson after having pinch run for him. Handling that one for out number one. Now here is Dane Orr. Boy, that first out's important in a spot like this. More important than a first out maybe at any other time. Especially with a guy like Hendrick who's oh, just yeah. having a not great all-around year. That's a strike right at the knees, strike one. Orge is 0 for 3. Now he's facing Suda for the first time tonight. That's low inside, ball one, strike one. Cardinals about hit the Cubs 8 to 6. Tommy John trying to be the stopper for the Yankees. He's got a four to one lead over Baltimore in the seventh. That's just a little inside. Tommy's trying for number 16 tonight. He's 15 and six. Ball two strike one. It's a ball. Ball three strike one. Strike! He breathes that one past him. Ball three, strike two. Seeing Barry Foot uh, catching Tidrow down in the bullpen, uh, I was talking with Joey Malfitano. He was hitting fungos to the infielders before the game, and Foot came up to him and said, I'll be able to catch for you tomorrow night. He'd had a real good treatment on his back just before that. Got him! Oh, he went for a low pitch. And that's out number two. Number and that then Second leaves it up to Ken Obergefell. That was a big one. Count went to three and one, and he got two strikes past him. Here's Obergefell. That's in there. Strike one, says Stello. Shelleher yelling it up there at third base. Scotty Thompson yelling it up at first. Low inside, ball one, strike one. Needs it out to bolt one down for Big Mac and also get his 25th save. Ball one, strike one. One and one. Cincinnati at L.A. No score at the end of one. Seaver against Royce. Ooh, that one almost took off. 
Ball two, strike one. That was about as high an outside uh, pitch as I've seen Suter throw. Ordinarily, his pitch won't do that. Ball two, strike one. Too high. Now once again, it's a three and one count. Obrickfell is followed by Durham, who can hit that ball. There's a fly ball to left field, racing over for it is Buckner. The catch. The ball skips on past him. Obrickfell is racing for third, and he is in there, standing up, just as Hendrick. Had some bad luck making a dive for De Jesus' ball. Bill Buckner making a great effort to put a finish to the ball game with his dive after this one. Can't handle it. It slipped on past and went to the wall. Winds up three bases for Obergefell. That's his fourth triple this year. Here's a brave effort by Buckner. He just can't make the catch. Now, the batter is Durham. Leon Durham, a 310 hitter at Springfield last year, and right at this minute, a 250 hitter with the Cardinals. He has 41 hits, eight doubles, a triple, five home runs. Watch Buckner on this replay. He goes after the ball without the glove. There's the glove. Never mind the glove. I don't need it. Let me, whoop. Okay. Now here's Durham. He had a homer and two singles in game four. It's the Cubs in Chicago. Strike one. And was, one was a home run that was hit about as hard as you'll see one hit over the bleachers on Sheffield. So yeah, this is one of those stars of the future, they figure here. Strike one. That is a ball I think Bruce thought he had it in there. So did Blackwell. Ball one strike one. The tying run is on third base. Two out. Bottom of the ninth. Ball one strike one. Cubs ahead. Five to four. Bruce Souter against one of the fine young strong stars of the future. Durham. That's a little low. Ball two strike one. Durham's followed in the batting order by Terry Kennedy. Two and one. High outside. Ball three, strike one. Coming up, one of the most important pitches of the week. Again for Scotty Thompson. He's at the bag as he fields the ball, and this game is suddenly all over. No run, one hit, a triple. No errors, two left. Final score.